Plants are mostly carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. They get the CO2 from the air. The amount of nitrogen and phosphate and potassium, even though we talk about those things as being really critical, and they are critical, the amount a plant actually uses is extremely small. Uh, one other question I had about uh, composting was, you know, some people, I think they're thrown when they look at, and I mean, he alluded to this earlier, but they'll look at the uh, NPK numbers on compost and they're, they're quite low, right? When you buy a fertilizer, it's like 10, 10, 10, 12, 12, 12, 6, 12, these big, big numbers, right? And then when you look at uh, compost, like 0.5 or mm -hmm. whatever, right? You're like, how could that be any use, right? So can you yeah. uh, explain to the viewers why that's not a big problem? Well, that's totally fine. Well, again, it could be a problem. I, I think what people need to do is take a step back and say, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish here? So if I have a container and I have a tomato plant growing in it and I'm watering that container every day in the middle of summer because it's super hot and it dries really fast, my water is washing all that nutrient out. If I put an inch of compost on top, it won't provide enough nutrients for that plant because I'm watering too much, all right? The other reason is that my soil in there is probably not real soil. It's probably some peat moss mix, which has no nutrients in it. Right. So fertilizer, synthetic fertilizer is better. The numbers are higher. I can put more on to make my plant grow. But now I take that same plant and put it in the garden where it has real soil. And real soil always is full of nutrients, even if I don't fertilize. Now I put an inch of compost on there, and it's only adding a little bit of of nutrients, most of the nutrients for that tomato plant are coming from the soil, not the compost, right? But next year, I'm going to put some more on and some more on. And so over, over several years, the amount coming out of my compost increases because I have more and more in there. But I, I don't need a really fast feed there. And I don't need to put a whole bunch on because my soil is doing that. In my container, I don't have the, that situation, right? Right. So either of those work. Um, plants actually use very few nutrients. There, there's a great study that's uh, worth looking up. Um, and this, this took place like 200 years ago, long before you know, we had most of our science available to us. And this person grew a tree in a, in a container and he weighed the tree and he weighed the soil and he only put on rainwater. And uh, he left us for 10 years or whatever. And then he weighed everything again. And what he found was the tree gained a huge amount of weight. The soil lost almost nothing. Hmm. And the reason was, and, and at that point, it was like a big revelation. The <laughs> yeah. reason was that plants are mostly carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. They get the CO2 from the air. The amount of nitrogen and phosphate and potassium, even though we talk about those things as being really critical, and they are critical, the amount a plant actually uses is extremely small, right? So plants actually need very, very low levels of nutrients. The tricky part is that if any one of them is just too low, the plants don't grow well, right? So we tend to over fertilize most of the time to make sure they're they're not missing something, right? Uh, the other difference is, is how you spread this. So if I take my compost, you know, it's a one, one, one compost and I put an inch on the soil, a bag doesn't go very far, right? But if I take that same bag of a 10, 10, 10, I'm spreading it over a large area, right? I'm not putting it in a, in a couple of yards here. I'm, I'm, I'm covering hundreds of yards. And by the time I do that, I've only added a, a one, 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 right? So synthetic fertilizer has high numbers, it's very concentrated, but when we use it, we spread it out a lot so that each individual plant only gets a little bit. Right? So that's the other reason for the difference. Right. Uh, most compost is somewhere around one, 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 or 0.5, somewhere in that range. Right. Um, yeah. And it's, it's also slowly, it's, it's not like you, you can put your synthetic out. It's, it's out there, you get a good rain, the plants take some of it up and some of it's just washed down and, 
Whereas the compost, you're getting a, a little, every time you ra it rains, a little bit of that's getting worked into the soil. Some of it's been taken away. There's a constant, just a, a constant little uh, supply, a little, little, little taste every time, I guess there's a, um, so it's another. Yeah, com it. Compost is very similar to the synthetic fertilizer that's called slow release that comes in little pellets, right? Right. You put that on the ground in the spring and, and it's good for six months. Wow. And every time it rains, a little bit comes out of those pellets. Right. right? That's used a lot in, in potted containers, not so much in, in a field garden, right? But that way you don't have to fertilize all the time. You just put a handful of this in and, and uh, every time you water, a little bit comes out and a little bit comes out. Right. Um, and that's really what compost is. It's a slow release process. That every time you water, a little bit comes out.